cancersupportmass.org. Veterans benefits just got a whole lot better. Whether you're about to leave the service or you've been out for decades, the PACT Act gives eligibility for VA benefits to thousands of veterans. The PACT Act is a new law that expands benefits for veterans exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, and other toxic substances. To learn more, visit va.gov slash PACT or call 1-800-MY-VA-411. If you or a loved one serve this country, it's time to get the benefits you deserve. If you're married and at least 72 years old, naming your estate a beneficiary of an IRA creates no adverse income tax consequences and protects your assets from the nursing home. Call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get their new guide, The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That's 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Hi, this is Chuck and Mike from the Armstrong Advisory Group and we're here to talk about our latest guide, The Key Numbers to Know in 2023. Mike, let's start with Social Security, a big cost of living adjustment coming. Yeah, well, we've all been feeling that inflation out there. And while you might be retired and not getting a raise at work, you are getting a pretty substantial cost of living adjustment when it comes to your Social Security benefits. So in 2023, you'll be looking at an 8.7% increase. So an individual who is receiving a gross monthly payment of $2,500 in 2022, you're going to be looking at an increase up to $2,717.50 in 2023, one of the largest COLA increases on Social Security we've ever seen. The other piece here, when we look at entitlements for retirees, Medicare Part B premiums, those are actually going to be declining next year. Yeah, this is a big surprise for folks, too. They they almost don't believe me when I tell them. But in 2022, that Medicare Part B premium, the standard rate was $170.10, going down to $164.90. No, you're not seeing a bunch of deflation in medical services. What you actually saw here is that there was one drug that was going to be very, very expensive that Medicare had priced in. They then took that back out, which lowered the premium. But the combination of Social Security going up and Medicare going down actually will result in a lot more income in people's pockets for retirees. The guide is titled The Key Numbers to Know in 23, and it goes through everything that we talked about here today, including a whole bunch of other numbers related to your taxes as well. How do you get the guide? Call 800 800- 393-4001. You can also download it by requesting it at armstrongadvisory.com. Again, that number is 800-393-4001. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. The United States Virgin Islands are St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John, and they are the perfect place for your next vacation. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands, because with perfect weather and year-round temperatures of 75 degrees, relaxation is at its finest. Enjoy their spectacular beaches, world-famous cuisine, and any one of their incredible experiences, like the Crucian Christmas Festival on St. Croix from December 11th through January 7th. Visit usvi.com and explore their wide variety of travel packages today. There's no money to exchange, no passport required, and best of all, no more domestic travel restrictions to enter. Paradise awaits you. Go to visit usvi.com for more information and to book your trip today. Come to America's Caribbean paradise. Visit usvi.com. That's visit usvi.com. If you're married and at least 72 years old, naming your estate a beneficiary of an IRA creates no adverse income tax consequences and protects your assets from the nursing home. Call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get their new guide, The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That's 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The Financial Exchange is produced by Money Matters Radio and is hosted by employees of the Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor that provides investment advisory services. All opinions expressed are solely those of the hosts, do not reflect the opinions of Armstrong Advisory or anyone else, and do not guarantee profit. Investments can lose money. This program does not offer any specific financial or investment advice. Please consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong and Money Matters Radio do not compensate each other for referrals and are not affiliated. 
This is the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zada and Mike Armstrong. Your exclusive look at business and financial news affecting your day, your city, your world. Stay informed and up to date about economic and market trends, plus breaking business news every day. This is the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zada and Mike Armstrong. It is actually Paul Lane and Mark Fanditti as we wrap up 2022 with the last trading day of the year, taking a look at markets in a bit of negative territory after what was a nice day yesterday. We've got the S&P 500 almost off about 1% and the Dow Jones off about 260 points as we head into what will be the worst year uh, from a market performance standpoint since 2008 with the market i believe mark we finished yesterday it was down about 18 percent year to date obviously mm -hmm. if we shave off another percent today very close to about 20 percent decline for 2022 and as we've been doing the last couple of days on the show as you hit the end of the year you kind of like to look back and see what did we learn from this year what changed you know some of the things that we've talked about that is being mentioned in many pieces here, particularly in the New York Times, is sort of an end of an era. And Mark, you and I talked about this a bit yesterday, end of an era of lower interest rates. And lower interest rates really propelled what we saw a ton of speculation. We had the meme stocks, crypto phase, everything you can imagine. And really, a lot of these companies reached these extremely high valuations that at the time you were scratching your head saying this doesn't make sense, particularly with the meme stocks. You think about AMC and GameStop. And now we've entered this era, it seems, at least certainly heading into 2023, that is going to be much more about what do you earn as a company and less focus <laughs> on uh, the growth. And I, you continue to read that in every year end wrap up piece here. Uh, yeah. In retrospect, it's easy i guess to see that mm -hmm. it wasn't easy for some commentators and analysts during the height of the exuberance to see that much of it was fueled much of it was excessive and fueled by i'll just sort of paraphrase here and oversimplify and just call it free money yep this yep. happened in the late 90s money qu wasn't quite as cheap as it became post pandemic and post for that matter financial crisis in the late 2000s uh, but it was uh you know, by historical standards, the easiest period in terms of monetary policy, when you combine zero interest rates with uh, a gigantic amount of so-called quantitative easing, the Fed buying longer-term bonds as well as shorter-term bonds as they typically, bonds and bills as they typically do. Uh, when you combine those two uh, forms of monetary stimulus, you've got an exceptionally, uh, exceptionally easy money environment. And it, it, you ticked off the list of uh, things that in a more, I don't know, normal, if you like, period when people are being more level headed, uh, wouldn't see the light of day. But serious investors entertain crypto and companies that have no prospects of profit nor a clear path to profit or plan to generate any. Yeah, the other biggest takeaway is the rate side of things. And uh, we have saw the 10-year Treasury increase 2.3%. That was the largest since 1962. That really blew me away to see that 10-year Treasury increase. It's been certainly a long time there. If we take a look at where it stands today, it's up about six basis points to about 3.9%. So it's going to finish off the year, like I said, much higher than it started. And when we were heading into the year, I know personally that inflation certainly was something that we were talking about, but the pace that the Fed had to raise rates exceeded what really any, any analyst could have anticipated as they make an effort to increase borrowing costs and slow down some of the demand in the economy. So that was a, a major takeaway as well. And we head into 2023 with the Fed and the central bank. Really, it seems like driving the bus for the markets that will continually look for their commentary as to where things stand for inflation and the markets in general. Yeah, that is the, the big theme. The era, and this is, I'm going to repeat myself a little bit here, but it's, it's a potent enough point that I think it's worth underscoring. Uh, the era of really easy money is over. This was look. This was bound to happen. Inflation was an accident waiting to happen for nearly forty years. We experienced nothing but low and stable changes in prices, low and stable changes in in inflation. The Fed and people who advised the Fed arguably became overconfident, complacent 
too confident in the Fed's credibility. Mm -hmm. They didn't think expectations would move. When you asked a monetary economist, what are inflation expectations? What are they likely to be? How are they likely to progress? They'd say, ah, they're going to be 2%. Because they'd been anchored at 2% for so long. So long. So the Fed took, and there was reason to take that for granted. Prices didn't collapse during the Great Recession, mm -hmm. when they could have. Unemployment went up to 10% plus. Prices didn't blow out in the recovery after uh, many rounds of QE in the early 2010s. So there was good reason to think that inflation expectations were stable enough to tolerate a very aggressive expansionary policy. And, and, even, wrong. and even when trillions of dollars of stimulus were put into U.S. Uh, Americans' pockets, there was still a feeling out there that certainly people mentioned this idea we might get into an inflationary period because of this, but there still was that anchored in belief and expectations that two or three percent would continue to be the number from inflation. Now, the stimulus piece, that wasn't the only reason for the inflation that we saw. It's it's multiple different factors coalescing at the same time. But that was something that, you know, it just didn't seem is it would be possible. We just we don't understand inflation well enough. In the late nineties there was a mystery. How could unemployment get below five and a half and then five percent and not have an uptick in inflation? Mm -hmm. And there was a big debate among economists at the time. Has the so called natural rate gone down? If so, why? Is it due to productivity? Is it which was a product, a byproduct of the uh, internet revolution, et cetera. So they were, that was the big mystery in the nineties. In the two thousands the big mystery became why don't we have more inflation? Well, after the mystery of during the Great Recession, why didn't inflation go down? Um, so nobody fully understands the process. It is, to your point, complex. There mm -hmm. are a number of factors contributing to it. But I find it useful to keep in mind that inflation, by definition, is an increase in average prices. It's not due to oil. Yep. It's not due to housing. It's, it's not due to transportation. Yep. So while we like to cite one-offs and then get excited when shelter costs plateau and appear to be easing, I'm not sure that's a useful way to think about inflation. I think it's gotten a lot of otherwise very smart people into trouble. Don't discount inflation based on movements in its underlying components uh, or exaggerate potential for high inflation based on movements in its underlying components. The way they calculate these indices, underlying components aren't supposed to over the medium term have an impact. It is an average price level measure. There's another piece here, uh, as I mentioned, the market being down close to 20% year to date. There's a piece in Bloomberg where they go over, hey, a bunch of really rich people lost money. And, and to me, the reason I'm not allocating a ton of time to this is because when stocks go down, typically the wealthiest people in this country or the world have a heavy stock ownership in the companies that they've created. Oftentimes they are founders. When those go down in value, guess what? Their net worth goes down too, whether it's Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, and, and people in the news media love to create these sensational headlines. Mark Zuckerberg lost $10 billion. It really, what happened is hit, the stock price went down. And that money that he lists there, that net worth, it's on paper. And it can go just as easily up in the other direction. Yeah, or the right. reason it swelled to that level is because what we saw in 2020 and 2021, where the values of those companies just ran you know, 50, 60 percent growth in terms of price. So to me, it's really it's just a sensationalized headline to right. get people to look at it. Yeah, really. it's, it's a little uncomfortable to read stories like that. It feels like ungracious rubbernecking. Mm -hmm. You know, you're looking back at the accident and sort of sniggering. Yeah. Maybe, oh, look at Zuckerberg. He was so rich. Now he's slightly less rich. <laughs> and maybe there's, I don't know, maybe some people get gratification from that. I'm not saying I'm above it. I read it and it's interesting. But to your point, it's just a function of falling asset values. Their wealth was on, as you put it, on paper. Exactly. And that's how that's how it goes with, with stock ownership. It creates a substantial amount of wealth over time, but just as easily those gains can be erased. And when they had talked about this idea of taxing unrealized gains, it's not never something that got full momentum. That's what I would dispute is that these are on paper. They just as easily can be wiped away. And we saw it this year when you look at the NASDAQ down 30%, it can be wiped out really quickly. I love the expression that the stock market takes the stairs on the way up, but the elevator on the way down, it can be a very quick fall. So uh, not much more to, to speak about there. We're going to take a quick break on the financial exchange. When we come back, we're going to be talking about retail investors. They took an absolute beating in 2022. Will that continue in 2023? Stick, us, stick with us here on the financial exchange.
Business and financial news affecting the markets and your wallet. We got it all straight from Wall Street, right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Hi, this is Mike Armstrong from the Armstrong Advisory Group. As another new year approaches, we've put together a brand new free guide that will walk you through the key numbers you'll need to know for 2023, especially when it comes to taxes. This guide outlines the marginal tax brackets for both married couples and single individuals, and it includes details about the new standard deduction, information that will be pivotal for your financial planning strategy. We also explore other areas like Medicare Part B premiums and all the ways your Social Security benefits are taxed. Call us today at 800 800- 393-4001 and request your free guide. The year may be ending, but it's not the time to put your financial needs on hold. Call us at 800-393-4001 to get your guide or request it online from our website, armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Veterans benefits just got a whole lot better. Whether you're about to leave the service or you've been out for decades, the PACT Act gives eligibility for VA benefits to thousands of veterans. The PACT Act is a new law that expands benefits for veterans exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, and other toxic substances. To learn more, visit va.gov slash PACT or call 1-800-MY-VA-411. If you or a loved one serve this country, it's time to get the benefits you deserve. If you're married and at least 72 years old, naming your estate a beneficiary of an IRA creates no adverse income tax consequences and protects your assets from the nursing home. Call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get their new guide, The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That's 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. This is Tucker Silva with the Financial Exchange Show, and I'm joined today by estate planning attorney Todd Lutsky, a partner with the law firm of Cushing and Dolan. And today we're talking about choosing beneficiaries for your IRA. Now, Todd, what is the best way to deal with qualified plan assets and Can they be transferred to these irrevocable Medicaid trusts? These assets are one of the toughest assets to deal with, not only in the Medicaid planning world, but in the estate planning world. It's that square peg that doesn't fit into the round hole very well. So in this case, the best thing to do with qualified plan assets is to use them, live on them, because they can't be currently transferred to these Medicaid irrevocable trusts. They also cannot be currently transferred really to any trust because the transferring of the asset from an IRA to a trust means you have to take it out of the IRA and pay the income tax. So that's why you can't do it. So my advice with qualified plan assets is spend them down, set up your estate plan, put all your other assets that you want to protect from the cost of long-term care into the irrevocable trust, get them protected, and spend down those assets or slowly bleed them into your irrevocable Medicaid trusts. Very tough situation, but there's lots to learn about how to deal with qualified plan assets. Educate yourself about the estate planning process. Request your free copy of Todd's brand new guide called The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate in IRA Beneficiary. Call 866-848-5699 or you can request a copy of the guide at LegalExchangeShow.com. That's Cushing & Dolan's brand new guide called The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate in IRA Beneficiary, 866-848-5699, or you can request it at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for, and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing & Dolan. Cushing & Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing & Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Text us, 617-362-1385, with your comments and questions about today's show. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. This segment of the Financial Exchange is brought to you in part by the U.S. Virgin Islands Department of Tourism. St. Croix, St. Thomas, St. John are the perfect places for your next vacation. Enjoy first-class resorts, exquisite cuisine, perfect temperatures all year round, and fall naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands. No passport is needed, and there are no more domestic travel requirements to enter. Come to America's Caribbean paradise. Go to visitusvi.com to book your trip. That's visitusvi.com. 
If you're a retail investor out there listening to the show, there's a chance that you might have taken a beaten in 2022. Actually, quite likely, there was very few places that you could get any type of uh, earnings or positive performance looking back at this year. But in particular, what we saw is companies such as we talked about them before, the AMCs, Robinhood, GameStop. Uh, Zoom is another one that I had almost sort of forgot about, Mark. That was the absolute darling of the pandemic, but now a company that uh, you just find it hard to believe that it will get anywhere back to n close to the heights mm -hmm. that it had reached during that pandemic period. Energy was one sector of the market that you actually were able to see a significant rise. We saw a 57% increase in the energy sector over the course of this year. But another uh, investment that I think really took a, a lot of headlines for 2022 was Series I savings bonds, something that had not been talked about uh, when I've I've been doing this about 10 years and something that never really came into purview because there just wasn't any yield that you could get from them. But they track inflation and were yielding up about 9.62%. And these purchase numbers that we saw for Series I savings bonds were just remarkable. Seven billion of these were purchased in the month of October. That was seven times more than what they had sold all of 2021. Just an incredibly popular year for the Series I savings bonds and CDs and high yield savings out there. Yeah, understandably. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I got to pour water on that. I'm not suggesting getting 9% isn't better than getting 4% or in the negative money, 20. 4 and a half percent or negative 20. <laughs> but I, I hope that's not the choice that most people face. Gee, do I put my money in stocks or do I put it in an I? They're such different asset classes with such different role and you didn't I'm not suggesting that you said this but they have very different roles in a portfolio I bonds or a any savings bond I guess is where you would put either short-term money yep. or long-term money that you intend to roll or that the recipient if you're giving it away to a, a child through a custodial account or something which I guess is pretty common and tends to roll over time just a very different goal and thus time frame and thus risk tolerance if you like than uh, some of the longer term alternatives, which have done poorly this year and will from time to time do poorly again. Yeah, I mean, in particular, the biggest caveat with the Series I savings bonds is you can only purchase $10,000 yeah. worth of them uh, in a household. You could do 2010 for each husband and wife. So when you're looking at your portfolio, it's obviously a very small piece of the puzzle. And it would be for funds that perhaps were sitting in a bank not earning as efficiently, though we did yeah. see money markets tick up a bit, but not in the the traditional retail banks, the Bank of America, is, I don't think they've moved their interest at all. I, I bank there. How are they getting just, away with this? Uh, it's, do, it's really absurd that they haven't gotten to 1%. Now the spread that they're making on those deposits is for easily four and change on what they're paying now. Now, granted, I don't keep a lot in Bank of America very intentionally because they don't pay anything, but because of the convenience factor, and this is the problem, and this is where they have us up against the wall, is that the stickiness that I'm just not willing to change because so many of my auto pays go through there to do to open up a new banking account. It's just such a tremendous hassle of an undertaking that I'm unwilling to do it. And I feel like that's the case for a lot. of. But clients. you can shift money out quickly to a money market fund. Right. So if you have a Vanguard account or a Fidelity account or a Schwab account, you can very quickly electronically transfer money from whatever excess remains. Yes. Uh, God willing. From your paycheck or your Social Security check, you could transfer it to a money market fund. You don't have to lock it up in a CD right now. You can get much higher rates in a money market fund, which uh, is not insured right. by, FD, by FDIC, but is generally uh, invested in, in full faith and credit. That is government uh, bills and bonds. Do you bank at, at one of the big ones? Yeah, or more for years. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. And it's, I try not to keep any same here. anything above the bare minimum required. Yeah, to pay bills right. in that account. No, same here. It's uh, it's just it's just frustrating that they wouldn't increase it a little bit. But I guess they mm. they have us where they want us, and they're able to uh, to really lock us in and uh, know that we're not going to be able to go through the hassle of you know your electric company, all that stuff. I guess a lot of it goes through the credit card. But regardless, we'll we'll see if they uh, they ever get their act together there. After eighteen trillion dollar route, global stocks face more hurdles in twenty twenty three. Sure. Interesting here, one of the stats that pulled from this piece from Bloomberg, Mark, where only four times since 1928 has the S&P 500 delivered negative calendar year returns uh, consecutively. And typically when that has occurred, the second year of it hasn't been too pretty. But 
you know, there's so many factors here. It's really hard to project. We talked about looking forward to predicting 2023. Right. You know, there's an analyst here. I used to work at Morgan Stanley. So uh, this stood out to me. I believe Mike Wilson. He's one of the biggest bears on the street. And he has these projections as to where the market will go. But he nor I have an idea of how all these factors are going to play out, whether it's inflation, you know, the the cr the crisis between Russia and Ukraine. All these factors are still undetermined. So we can have, you know, best case and worst case scenarios, but it's hard to know how everything's going to play out heading to this year. Uh, it is, which is why for most of us, the best advice is to stay put if your goals haven't changed, right? Mm -hmm. you, this is what you tell people all, all the time. Just very generally speaking, I'm not dispensing advice. I'm not qualified to. But as with any long-term undertaking, if your endpoint hasn't changed, why would you change strategy? Can we go back to the point you made about consecutive negative returns yes. being rare? It, it, it's true. It, the probability, if you like, under normal circumstances of consecutive down years in stocks is quite low because stocks tend to go up. But if you look at the episodes in history when that has happened, just going from most to least recent, mm -hmm. I think it's once you consider the historical context, it's easy to understand why stocks fell multiple years. So 2000 to 2002, yep. it was cumulatively about a 40 percent decline, but it, it wasn't all at once. And, and anyone who lived through it remembers it was a slow, painful drip. First tech collapsed. Yeah. Then we had 9-11, of course. Mm -hmm. The recession, which 9-11 came right after that recession ended. It's easy to blur all these things together. There was a little recession between, in, in the year 2000, uh, 2001, excuse me, a little recession in between the bookends of that market collapse. And then you had 2002, which was the worst of the three years, down about 22%. And it was propagated at that point by mutual fund scandals, lack of confidence in the industry generally, and of course, a sluggish economy. And then when we invaded Iraq, things went gangbusters. I can't quite explain why, <laughs> but it, it everything went uh, it went back on the rails in April of, of that year. Uh, coincidentally, maybe uh, when the war with Iraq started and the market got clarity as to what we we're going to do there. And then you have to go back to the early 1970s for the next episode of consecutive negative returns, 73, 74, down 14 and down 25, cumulatively, again, about 40%. Mm -hmm. You had a war in the Middle East. You had oil prices, I want to say quadrupling. Uh, you, thus, persistent inflation here. Mm -hmm. Unemployment, 8 9%. Fed funds, 10 or so percent. So understandable in historical context why that would have happened. I'm not going to bore everybody with recounting <laughs> additional episodes. Yeah, you have what, to go back to the 40s. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, economic backdrop is pretty straightforward. Until the war came, American industry couldn't get back on its feet after the Great Depression. So you had a few episodes of back-to-back -back returns. So this year, we've got Fed hiking rates still to at least 5% probably. Inflation is still pretty dug in. Mm -hmm. It's arguably plateaued. We won't really know until uh, the data confirms it further. Hopefully, we'll ease, but still very high. You've got stocks that are not cheap. Well, yep. uh, That's one of the, the risks out there is corporate profits and just the, yeah, re the revisions on, on that side of things. That is one piece that many economists or analysts have cited that could be a potential pitfall heading into 2023. We're going to take a break here on the Financial Exchange, but when we come back, we're going to be talking a little bit about minimum wage and what that means for workers. That's right after this. Always first, right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Veterans benefits just got a whole lot better. Whether you're about to leave the service or you've been out for decades, the PACT Act gives eligibility for VA benefits to thousands of veterans. The PACT Act is a new law that expands benefits for veterans exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, and other toxic substances. To learn more, visit va.gov slash PACT or call 1-800-MY-VA-411. If you or a loved one serve this country, it's time to get the benefits you deserve. If you're married and at least 72 years old, naming your estate a beneficiary of an IRA creates no adverse income tax consequences and protects your assets from the nursing home. Call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get their new guide, The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That's 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The United States Virgin Islands are St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. And they are the perfect place for your next vacation. 
From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands. Because with perfect weather and year-round temperatures of 75 degrees, relaxation is at its finest. Enjoy their spectacular beaches, world-famous cuisine, and any one of their incredible experiences, like the Crucian Christmas Festival on St. Croix from December 11th through January 7th. Visit usvi.com and explore their wide variety of travel packages today. There's no money to exchange, no passport required, and best of all, no more domestic travel restrictions to enter. Paradise awaits you. Go to visitusvi.com for more information and to book your trip today. Come to America's Caribbean paradise. Visit usvi.com. That's visitusvi.com. Beneficiary designations are critically important if you want your assets to be distributed efficiently and protected from probate or the nursing home. A spouse is commonly named a beneficiary, but in that case, assets are subjected to tax consequences and they are at risk to the nursing home. One option you may not have thought of is naming your estate the beneficiary of an IRA or life insurance policy. If you are married, there are significant benefits that include avoiding the probate process and enjoying enhanced estate tax reduction without creating any income tax issues on your acquired minimum distributions. Call Cushing and Dolan right now at 866-848-5699 and ask for their new free guide called The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That number again is 866-848-5699. Or you can request the guide online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Hi, it's Chuck and Mike from the Armstrong Advisory Group. And we're here today with a new guide this month titled The Key Numbers to Know in 2023. Mike, let's talk a little bit about retirement accounts and how much people can contribute to them. Let's start first with 401ks. What's happening to those contribution limits for next year? Yeah, this is the item that impacts most savers out there that you know that work for a large employer. You might have that 401k plan. And with inflation, a lot of these different tax items have been increasing. So for 2023, the limit, the annual limit on how much you can put into a 401k, 403b, most 457 plans, it's gone up to $22,500. That's up from just $20,500 in 2022. So a good $2,000 increase when it comes to those contribution limits. What if you're over age 50? What can you do as a catch-up contribution? Yeah, so they increased that too, not quite as much, but the IRS increased the catch-up contribution for 2023 up to $7,500, so a $1,000 increase from where we were in 2022, so really bumping that up again. Let's say that you don't have access to a 401k. What about an IRA or Roth IRA? Yeah, unfortunately not quite as rich here, but you're going to see that contribution limit go up to $6,500 on those IRAs from $6,000 in years past. You also have a catch-up available to you there, but just keep in mind that there are some income phase-outs, especially for those Roth IRAs. A whole bunch of numbers change each year as it relates to your personal finances, and our guide this month is titled The Key Numbers to Know in 2023. How do you request it? Call 800 393 Four zero zero one. That number again is 800-393-4001. Or you can also request it online at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Time now for Wall Street Watch. A complete look at what's moving markets so far today, right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. And I'm Ben Kitchen with your Wall Street Watch. Currently, markets are down. Dow Jones Industrial Average down 200 points or 0.62%. S&P 500 down 29.35 points or 0.76 percentage points. And the NASDAQ is down over a full percentage point, or 105 points. Southwest Airlines, well, they're ticking back up ever so slightly right now, up nine-tenths of a percentage point after it announced a plan to return to regular flight schedules today and promised to reimburse customers for any reasonable expenses they incurred during the airline's cancellation of thousands of flights over the past week. Meanwhile, 
Enovix shares are slightly down, just about to hit down a percentage point after news that the lithium-ion manufacturer will appoint Raj Taluri CEO effective January 18th. Taluri joins the company from his previous position as Senior Vice President of Mobile Business at Micron Technology. And finally on Wall Street Watch today, Tesla is currently up a half a point. The tech giant posted its first back-to-back gains since November 22nd and November 23rd. Tesla has not had three rising days in a row since the end of October. That would be the 25th to 28th. The stock is still down 65% for the year. That is your Wall Street Watch. I'm Ben Kitchen. Hopefully we can see a little bit of positive market action. We were up about 1.7% yesterday, and then as Ben alluded to, we're off about 0.7% today. So hopefully we can get a little momentum going into the back half of the trading day. I want to talk a little bit about uh, state minimum wage. Uh, We had recently had the news here in Massachusetts that they increased the state minimum wage to $15 an hour. And Mark, Chuck and I were having the conversation earlier this week Given the labor market that we're in today, it's of my opinion that really the minimum wage becomes not irrelevant, but just certainly less relevant because the market really dictates much more what hourly wages versus the minimum wage. I'm not saying that the minimum wage isn't important because I do believe that it is to set the floor. Mm -hmm. But when you're in such a tight labor market where I believe it's, you know, 10.3 3 million jobs still mm-hmm. available out there, 1.7 to 1 ratio of jobs available versus people. So to me, it's not as significant this year as it is in tighter labor markets. Yeah. I, hate I to, mean, looser looser labor markets, I guess. I, 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 I hate to keep getting dry uh, on these subjects and talking about where the research stands, but for a long time, it was thought you raise the minimum wage, it raises unemployment because mm-hmm. you're raising the cost of the least productive workers and businesses just aren't going to hire them. Yep. And then in the 90s, some research came along that said, you know, they looked at uh, a hike in the minimum wage in Jersey relative or Pennsylvania, I forget which, relative to Jersey. They share a border. Very easy to do an experiment. Well, let's see what happened. Mm-hmm. It, did unemployment go up when Jersey raised the minimum wage? And it didn't. Yep. And there's been a ton of work in the past 25 or so years suggesting we don't really know what the effects of a hike in the minimum wage are. No, I, the question yeah, is, separate. is it binding? Right. By binding, I mean to the point you just made. Would it? Would the worker have made that much anyway? And the answer in this climate, if as is, is we talked about yesterday, if you drive by any fast food place, the tyrant at 16 bucks an hour is this minimum wage is not – 15 bucks an hour is probably not binding anymore. No, I think that uh, we have a McDonald's that we drive by on 95 where I swear it was advertising maybe $20 an hour. So the 15 really? is is irrelevant. Maybe it was 18 to 20 But regardless, all of these these companies – and I think about when I was looking for summer jobs back you know, 10 years ago when it was a labor market that it was more difficult to, to find a job, that minimum wage was – that was the threshold for those types of jobs. And there wasn't really any negotiation. I would imagine now it's a little bit different. You do have the employee has a little bit more negotiating power than they did previously. Yeah, McDonald's is is desperate. You drive up and at the drive through, of course, you you can text your job application in. Oh, really? They'll feed you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that that's in anybody's long term interest. We all love McDonald's, but not every day. Probably. In moderation. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they'll feed you. They'll pay for education. You, you, they've got all this posted right at the drive. I don't know if anybody has ever spontaneously decided to apply for a job at the drive-through or why they're posting all this there. But good business. They're making it sound like you're joining the army now. We'll feed you. <laughs> we'll pay you. We'll clothe you. We'll shelter you. <laughs> Great benefits. I actually don't know about that part. There is some research that they had done to, that speaks to our point through September. MIT had come out saying that the lowest 10% of workers by income in each state earned hourly wages that were one third higher than state okay, minimum so it's wages. Not binding anymore. So it, it really is reflective of that. That's not really the case, the minimum wage. One thing that I found interesting is when you look at all the states throughout the country, only 12 states tie their minimum wage to inflation. And to me, that seems like a practice that would make a lot of sense. However, I guess it's it's largely offset by the market dynamics, yeah, but never, I wonder I, yeah, why but, more states don't do that. Why like, don't they do that? Well, because it, it's politically it's a politically charged 
subject, obviously, every time it comes up at the state or federal level. The federal minimum wage has been at seven twenty-five or seven well, fifty, I think, forever. Right? That's what blew me away is that federal I believe twenty states are still operating are tied under to the federal. Seven twenty, yeah. yeah by, which was, by, by statute, they are they move in lockstep with the federal, which hasn't moved since Obama. Two, yeah, two thousand nine, and, and we've seen that's thirteen years ago. Prices have yep. gone up. But uh, I think the, the big point here is the one you made to start off this segment, which is I'm not sure it matters anymore because it's not binding. Right. It's, right. it's not a great poverty tool. Most, I think, economists would agree with that. And common sense suggests it's not a good uh, poverty tool. It's just if you annualize the minimum wage, the amount is, is a pittance, even in the more generous states. Yeah, some of the states here, Maine, it looks like they're going to jump up about 7%. Their minimum wage will, will go up to about $13. Like I said, Massachusetts up to 15 I believe the highest statewide is California. And if you take a look at a specific area, Seattle has gone up to about 1870 for uh, large employers. They, we also had noticed that in Massachusetts, at least, the, the server wage jumped up to, I believe, about $6.75 an hour. So uh, like we said, it's it's something to keep an eye on, but in this labor market, not as uh, relevant as it would be typically. Electric vehicles now are coming out with these federal tax credits heading into 2023, and it's a really unique year for these. I mean, they've been around for a long time, the electric vehicle tax credit, but now it appears as if there's just going to be a slight window to get these. And Mark, we don't have to spend a ton of time because my brain started to just completely tap out when I saw all the specifications on how you get the tax credits. But the long and short of it is they want a lot of the raw materials to come from North America in order to get these credits for 2023. Yeah, I get quickly frustrated uh, by the comp by the complexities you suggested of all this, by the restrictions, by the inevitable rent seeking. It's just a fancy way of saying companies angling yes. for their spot at the trough that go into something like this. It's a noble goal. We all want to reduce carbon emissions. Their effect now is pretty obvious. And this comes from someone who was skeptical, but we're now well outside normal warming, I'm afraid. And it's probably partly man-made. Just want to sort of get that out there. We think it's an important policy, but is this the right way to go about it? Overly complex, favoring domestic manufacturers. It seems anti-consumer. It's just so difficult because China has its fingerprints all over the process, whether it's controlling a, a mine in the Con mines in the Congo that produce cobalt. It, it's just it's a complex supply chain. So it's not easily discernible just how when you're talking about percentages of materials, it's tough. But I'll summarize by saying that the seventy five hundred dollar tax credit, it is for uh, sedans under fifty five K SUV and pickups under 80 K. You got to make less than one hundred fifty K to be a single fire to be eligible and 300 K for a couple. That's for at least the first couple months of the year it's here. It's just, it's just bewildering. The, the, the thing, the thinking used to be, if you want to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, you tax them. Yep. That didn't get far. No, nobody likes taxes. <laughs> no. it's, it's frankly the smart way to do it, but it's just never been palatable to Americans for whatever reason. <laughs> we'll see what they come up with in March. They're supposed to be changing the rules. I would bet oh, it's not changed in March. How, how are people supposed to make long-term decisions if they're constantly tinkering with these rules it's uh, it seems like a, incredibly convoluted it seems like a you know what show we're gonna take a break <laughs> here on the uh, financial exchange but when we come back we're gonna be talking a little bit about some of the market recap and some more on individual stocks that's right after this break wall street's volatility continues as inflation remains a factor for investors and the threat of a recession lingers breaking business news all morning long only here on the financial exchange radio network Beneficiary designations are critically important if you want your assets to be distributed efficiently and protected from probate or the nursing home. A spouse is commonly named a beneficiary, but in that case, assets are subjected to tax consequences and they are at risk to the nursing home. One option you may not have thought of is naming your estate the beneficiary of an IRA or life insurance policy. If you are married, there are significant benefits that include avoiding the probate process and enjoying enhanced estate tax reduction without creating any income tax issues on your required minimum distributions. Call Cushing and Dolan right now at 866-848-5699 and ask for their new free guide called The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That number again is 866-848-5699. Or you can request the guide online at LegalExchangeShow.com. 
The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Veterans benefits just got a whole lot better. Whether you're about to leave the service or you've been out for decades, the PACT Act gives eligibility for VA benefits to thousands of veterans. The PACT Act is a new law that expands benefits for veterans exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, and other toxic substances. To learn more, visit va.gov slash PACT or call 1-800-MY-VA-411. If you or a loved one served this country, it's time to get the benefits you deserve. If you're married and at least 72 years old, naming your estate a beneficiary of an IRA creates no adverse income tax consequences and protects your assets from the nursing home. Call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get their new guide, The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That's 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The United States Virgin Islands are St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John, and they are the perfect place for your next vacation. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands. Because with perfect weather and year-round temperatures of 75 degrees, relaxation is at its finest. Enjoy their spectacular beaches, world-famous cuisine, and any one of their incredible experiences, like the Crucian Christmas Festival on St. Croix from December 11th through January 7th. Visit usvi.com and explore their wide variety of travel packages today. There's no money to exchange, no passport required, and best of all, no more domestic travel restrictions to enter. Paradise awaits you. Go to visit usvi.com for more information and to book your trip today. Come to America's Caribbean paradise. Visit usvi.com. That's visit usvi.com. Beneficiary designations are critically important if you want your assets to be distributed efficiently and protected from probate or the nursing home. A spouse is commonly named a beneficiary, but in that case, assets are subjected to tax consequences and they are at risk to the nursing home. One option you may not have thought of is naming your estate the beneficiary of an IRA or life insurance policy. If you are married, there are significant benefits that include avoiding the probate process and enjoying enhanced estate tax reduction without creating any income tax issues on your required minimum distributions. Call Cushing and Dolan right now at 866-848-5699 and ask for their new free guide called The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That number again is 866-848-5699 or you can request the guide online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The Financial Exchange has a brand new text code. Text us at 617-362-1385 and keep on top of breaking business news all day long. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Taking a look at markets, we're down about 0.6% on the S&P, off about 150 points on the Dow Jones as we head into our final trading session of 2022. One of the things that I wanted to touch upon, it being the last day of the year, it's the last day of the year for planning purposes to l- take a look at, you know, tax loss selling is something that you can uh, you can do. There's certainly a lot of losses to take there across client portfolios. You can also take a look at charitable contributions uh, into different institutions. Last day to do that for your 2022 taxes. And then another piece you can do uh, at the state level here in Massachusetts, 529 contributions can give you a little bit of an income tax deduction as well. Not a CPA by any means, but those are just some of the things to, to think about heading into the last day of the year here. Any takeaways, Mark, that you have, you had mentioned just uh, looking at the course of the year, trends, things like that, or a, yeah. a stock that stood out to you over the course of 22? Uh, not so much an individual stock. It's That's not the way I tend to think about the, the world. We think about the world here in terms of broad asset classes, the purposes that they serve, and how you synthesize them into a well-diversified portfolio. But there have been some, in- that said, the, the the Tesla story at the risk of rubbernecking, like I criticized earlier, is difficult to turn away from uh, the slow 
implosion, though maybe things will turn around there if that ship gets righted. The larger tech story is an interesting one. It ties into the interest rate increase story we talked about early. We went from 0% to start the year on very short-term interest rates, those targeted by the Federal Reserve, to 4.25% now on our way to 5 The effect on growth-sensitive and interest rate-sensitive assets has been devastating. Right. Not surprisingly, if you told somebody at the beginning of the year, Fed funds is going to 5 ish because inflation is going to again run in the mid-single digits. And we're going into year three now, mid-single digit inflation. It's, it's happened quickly, and it seems to be plateauing, maybe even receding, but it's hard to understate what a precarious point we're at. Does it dig in and persist? Does it retreat? We don't know. The effect on growth-sensitive stocks, tech stocks, real estate, interest rate-sensitive stocks specifically has just been devastating, as you'd expect. And conversely, it's been helpful to others, as you mentioned at the start of the program. There are always pockets of salvation in markets, utilities and uh, health care uh, come to mind. Consumer uh, defensive stocks have performed reasonably. Well, some of those have had negative returns, but reasonably well in a relative sense. Everything's just been turned upside down this year, but in a way that was predictable if you knew what was going to happen, with the exception being, of course, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which was an entirely different story yeah, year. Yeah, I wish I did. I, I'm going to pivot gears for us here because I just uh, it's just been such a tough year. We need to think about the new year. New Year's plans, guys. Everyone just uh, staying local here, hanging out at the uh, your respective houses? I guess, but I might actually head down to the United States Virgin Islands, which are St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John, and they are the perfect place for your next vacation. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands because with perfect weather and year-round temperatures of 75 degrees, relaxation is at its finest. Enjoy their spectacular beaches, world-famous cuisine, and any one of their incredible experiences like the Crucian Christmas Festival on St. Croix or the St. John Carnival. Visit usvi.com and explore their wide variety of travel packages today. There's no money to exchange, no passport required, and best of all, no more domestic travel restrictions to enter. Paradise awaits you. Go to visitusvi.com for more information and to book your trip today. Come to America's Caribbean paradise. Visit usvi.com. That's visitusvi.com. Well done there, Ben. Uh, not bad for the backups here to uh, to pull off Thanks that for the little, little so, segue. So you aren't going to USVI this weekend. That was just a segue to he your might be. commercial I might be message. now, now that I've convinced myself. S- speaking of travel and fun places <laughs> to be, there's an article here ranking the uh, top 10 places to spend New Year's. And I'm going to put on my Chuck hat and poll you guys as to what you think the top three places are to spend New Year's. Like Mark, geographies I'll start with you. or types of no, people? Can you be a little fun, more specific? For fun, Mark, not, not geography. No, I, no, with no, the no, best no. Place. I mean, like, when you say place, do you mean a destination or do you mean a, a bar? A, no, a United States city. Oh, what is oh, the, okay. the rank of the top three cities in our country that uh, people would like to spend New Year's from a survey standpoint? I, I think the idiots will say New York City. You are I was, correct. I was going to New say York that. is number one. Uh, very clear as to the reason why for that with the ball drop and everything else there. Can you guess two or three? Chicago might be one. It's a fun place. Chicago's number eight on the list. Ben, any <laughs> okay, thoughts? Yeah. Uh, Miami? I thought Miami, too. Mm. I spent a New Year's there, and it, it is a lot of fun because the weather is a whole heck of a lot better than Chicago or New York, but that did not crack the list. Number two is the most wonderful place on earth, unless you're a parent, which is Orlando, Florida, likely because of the Disney World celebrations, I would imagine. And number three is Las Vegas. That one does make a whole heck of a lot of sense for a good time. It's probably true of any weekend, though. Where do you want to go for a weekend? It's going to be New York City to shop, Disney World, or Vegas. Disney World would rank a lot lower for me, but yes, I do. I do know what you're saying. That now they also yes. ranked the most expensive places to spend New Year's. As you can imagine, New York was number three on that list. Ben, you had mentioned before Miami. That is number two on the list for the most expensive place to spend New Year's. Number one, I don't think you'll ever get in a million years. I'll, I'll throw out a guess to, to each of you to see if you have any sense for for what it would be i'm very surprised by this too it's in the united states it's in the united states i'll give you a hint it's on the west coast seattle not a bad guess but that was number six most expensive city in the west on the west coast i don't know la or uh, san fran there you go uh irvine california not not exactly la but you're at least in and i just don't understand why irvine here is 
the the number one. You know, they mentioned New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago. You can expect to spend eight hundred sixty five dollars for dinner and a show for two. I still don't understand why. What's Irv, there? Uh, that's a great question. There's a college there, <laughs> but I don't I don't know what else really uh, really goes there that would make it uh, such an expensive destination. It is usually one of the most overrated holidays, uh, in my opinion. The amount of upcharge that they have, and I'm out of the, the bar scene days, but going into Boston to have to spend $100 to get into a place that you can normally get into without a cover, and also the logistics of getting out of the city. Now, Uber makes it a little bit better, but it's just um, it's a much better spot to kind of hang at someone's house versus going into those cities. But Absolutely. you guys just, just hanging low-key, nothing, nothing big plan. No, just <laughs> very low key, watching sports and call Mark, it a day. Mark will be breaking down uh, charts and uh, <laughs> studying what the forecasts look like for 2030. He'll be emailing me a new chart. Get this out immediately. <laughs> Tweet this. All right, taking a look at markets, we've got the Dow Jones off about 200 points or 0.63%. The S&P 500 is off about three quarters of a percent at 28 points. The NASDAQ also off about the same three quarters of a percent. Taking a look at the U.S. 10-year Treasury, it's eased off a bit at 3.88%. Gold at the moment is down about a quarter of a percent. If we take a look at some of the stocks that are making notable headlines to, throughout today's trading, Las Vegas Sands is up about a couple percent. From a sector perspective, we've got energy cooling off a little bit in terms of what we're seeing here for trading only at $78 a barrel really just been an incredible year for oil just uh, ups and downs like no other mm -hmm. we're going to take a break here on the financial exchange but in the second hour we'll be talking a little bit more about southwest and much much more that's right after this break stick with us This is Tucker Silva with the Financial Exchange Show, and I'm joined today by estate planning attorney Todd Lutsky, a partner with the law firm of Cushing & Dolan. And today, we're talking about choosing beneficiaries for your IRA. Now, Todd, what is the best way to deal with qualified plan assets and... Can they be transferred to these irrevocable Medicaid trusts? These assets are one of the toughest assets to deal with, in the, not only in the Medicaid planning world, but in the estate planning world. It's that square peg that doesn't fit into the round hole very well. So in this case, the best thing to do with qualified plan assets is to use them live on them because they can't be currently transferred to these Medicaid irrevocable trusts. They also cannot be currently transferred really to any trust because the transferring of the asset from an IRA to a trust means you have to take it out of the IRA and pay the income tax. So that's why you can't do it. So my advice with qualified plan assets is spend them down, set up your estate plan, put all your other assets that you want to protect from the cost of long-term care into the irrevocable trust, get them protected, and spend down those assets or slowly bleed them into your irrevocable Medicaid trusts. Very tough situation, but there's lots to learn about how to deal with qualified plan assets. Educate yourself about the estate planning process. Request your free copy of Todd's brand new guide called The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. Call 866-848-5699 or you can request a copy of the guide at LegalExchangeShow.com. That's Cushing & Dolan's brand new guide called The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary, 866-848-5699, or you can request it at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for, and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing & Dolan. Cushing & Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing & Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. For 40 years, Cancer Support Community has been a relentless ally for anyone impacted by cancer with free services provided online and in person with their newest location in Massachusetts. Connect with Cancer Support Community Massachusetts for free emotional support, educational resources, patient navigation, financial counseling, and more. 617-797-3391. CancerSupportMass.org. CancerSupportMass.org. The United States Virgin Islands are St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John, and they are the perfect place for your next vacation. 
From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands. Because with perfect weather and year-round temperatures of 75 degrees, relaxation is at its finest. Enjoy their spectacular beaches, world-famous cuisine, and any one of their incredible experiences, like the Crucian Christmas Festival on St. Croix from December 11th through January 7th. Visit usvi.com and explore their wide variety of travel packages today. There's no money to exchange, no passport required, and best of all, no more domestic travel restrictions to enter. Paradise awaits you. Go to visitusvi.com for more information and to book your trip today. Come to America's Caribbean paradise. Visit usvi.com. That's visitusvi.com. This is the Money Matters Radio Network, WBNW 1120 AM and W275 CMFM, Concord, Boston, the Money Matters Radio Network. Veterans benefits just got a whole lot better. Whether you're about to leave the service or you've been out for decades, the PACT Act gives eligibility for VA benefits to thousands of veterans. The PACT Act is a new law that expands benefits for veterans exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, and other toxic substances. To learn more, visit va.gov slash PACT or call 1-800-MY-VA-411. If you or a loved one serve this country, it's time to get the benefits you deserve. If you're married and at least 72 years old, naming your estate a beneficiary of an IRA creates no adverse income tax consequences and protects your assets from the nursing home. Call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get their new guide, The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That's 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Hi, this is Chuck and Mike from the Armstrong Advisory Group, and we're here to talk about our latest guide, The Key Numbers to Know in 2023. Mike, let's start with Social Security, a big cost of living adjustment coming. Yeah, well, we've all been feeling that inflation out there. And while you might be retired and not getting a raise at work, you are getting a pretty substantial cost of living adjustment when it comes to your Social Security benefits. So in 2023, you'll be looking at an 8.7% increase. So an individual who is receiving a gross monthly payment of $2,500 in 2022, you're going to be looking at an increase up to $2,717.50 in 2023, one of the largest COLA increases on Social Security we've ever seen. The other piece here, when we look at entitlements for retirees, Medicare Part B premiums, those are actually going to be declining next year. Yeah, this is a big surprise for folks, too. They they almost don't believe me when I tell them. But in 2022, that Medicare Part B premium, the standard rate was $170.10, going down to $164.90. No, you're not seeing a bunch of deflation in medical services. What you actually saw here is that there was one drug that was going to be very, very expensive that Medicare had priced in. They then took that back out, which lowered the premium. But the combination of Social Security going up and Medicare going down actually will result in a lot more income in people's pockets for retirees. The guide is titled The Key Numbers to Know in 23, and it goes through everything that we talked about here today, including a whole bunch of other numbers related to your taxes as well. How do you get the guide? Call 800 393 4001. You can also download it by requesting it at armstrongadvisory.com. Again, that number is 800 393 4001. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Beneficiary designations are critically important if you want your assets to be distributed efficiently and protected from probate or the nursing home. A spouse is commonly named a beneficiary. But in that case, assets are subjected to tax consequences and they are at risk to the nursing home. One option you may not have thought of is naming your estate the beneficiary of an IRA or life insurance policy. If you are married, there are significant benefits that include avoiding the probate process and enjoying enhanced estate tax reduction without creating any income tax issues on your required minimum distributions. Call Cushing and Dolan right now at 866-848-5699 and ask for their new free guide called The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That number again is 866-848-5699. Or you can request the guide online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. 
For 40 years, Cancer Support Community has been a relentless ally for anyone impacted by cancer with free services provided online and in person with their newest location in Massachusetts. Connect with Cancer Support Community Massachusetts for free emotional support, educational resources, patient navigation, financial counseling, and more. 617-797-3391. CancerSupportMass.org. CancerSupportMass.org. The Financial Exchange is produced by Money Matters Radio and is hosted by employees of the Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor that provides investment advisory services. All opinions expressed are solely those of the hosts, do not reflect the opinions of Armstrong Advisory or anyone else, and do not guarantee profit. Investments can lose money. This program does not offer any specific financial or investment advice. Please consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong and Money Matters Radio do not compensate each other for referrals and are not affiliated. This is the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zotta and Mike Armstrong. Your exclusive look at business and financial news affecting your day, your city, your world. Stay informed and up-to-date about economic and market trends. Plus, get breaking business news every day. The Financial Exchange is a proud partner of the Disabled American Veterans Department of Massachusetts. You, too, can support our great American heroes by visiting financialexchangeshow.com slash DAV. And now, it's time for the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zotta and Mike Armstrong. It is Paul Lane and Mark Vendetti taking you into our two here of the Financial Exchange, the last trading day of the year for 2022. Markets are not doing so hot, certainly not a major sell-off by any means, likely very low trading volume on a day like today, but S&P is off about three quarters of a percent. A company that's been in the news and that we've covered extensively on the show for the last week or so is Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines, as many of the listeners I'm sure know, at this point has canceled, I believe it was up to 13,000 flights over the course of the last week uh, with another 2,300 yesterday. However, I have some good news to report for all you Southwest travelers. Today, they were only anticipating, I believe, canceling about 39 flights. So after a full week, hooray, finally, Southwest appears to be back up and running somewhat smoothly, but might want to knock on wood on that. Uh, It's just been a calamitous week for Southwest Airlines. Their stock has declined as a result of it. And what we're now trying to get a sense for, and there's no exact number for this, but is what going to be what is going to be the cost of all the measures that they're going to need to take to, uh, you know, square up with all of the travelers that were so affected by what we've seen over the last holiday week. You know, a similar incident back in October of 2021 for Southwest cost about $75 million, but I think this is going to be way more significant in terms of the, the final number that we're going to see here from Southwest because there was a lot of disruption for a long period of time. Yeah, they've committed to, to what extent I don't know, to making people whole. That might be too strong an expression. They've committed to compensating people for their inconvenience. Uh, how many will take them up on that? Uh, to what extent will they compensate them? What metric will be used? How are they going to benchmark it, that is? And what's the extent of that going to be? Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, what are these passengers going to get back and what are you entitled yeah. to in this type of scenario? Uh, so certainly, very obviously, you are entitled to a refund for your ticket if you elect not to take a you know alternative flight. You, you get your money back, which you know, that that makes certainly a lot of sense. Where it starts to get a little bit trickier is one of the things that Southwest does not do typically is allow for uh, rebooking on competitors' flights, where Delta and American Airlines, if you can't fly with them and you book with the other, they will reimburse you in those situations under extenuating circumstances, of course. However, it seems like this time around, Southwest, that's not usually their normal business practice, but Given the extenuating circumstances, they're going to have to uh, at least account for that. Similarly, with uh, renting a car, all the other alternative means of travel, it seems like they're going to have to cover those receipts as well. The trickiest part is going to be the Airbnb and the hotel stay. Certainly, they will reimburse, I would imagine, for you know the court, Courtyard Marriott next to an airport. But if someone's you know, at the penthouse at the Ritz Carlton, I don't think they're going to be as lenient on reimbursements there. But that's one of the things that 
the language is relatively loose on there. Yeah, I guess it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Uh, this is unprecedented, as you've discussed this week. And the financial damages, they have some number in mind as a cap, but we just don't know the financial consequences. Excuse me. We just don't know what those will be. The other thing is lost bags. Uh, I guess you're entitled to Jeez. up to $3,800 of reimbursement on lost bags. You have to prove, though, that you know there was items in there that were worth that value. Um, but it's going to be an absolute headache. I can't imagine the process of submitting all those receipts. I believe Southwest, their website was crashing as people were trying to submit for these reimbursements. It's likely going to be, there was one estimate, you know, like I said, these numbers aren't pinned down, but it's 2 million customers that have been impacted. So they're looking at between five to $600 million in potential obligation so much more significant than that 2075 do so they announced a ceiling on compensation for lost personal items is did you say no that is a a federal that was from the department uh of transportation secretary uh but it but is that how you pronounce his last name Buttigieg. He, Buttigieg is required to reimburse passengers up to thirty eight hundred dollars for provable direct or consequential damages resulting from disappearance blah 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 to delivery provable, of a passenger that's yeah that's the main caveat point. here I mean all, all of this stuff has to be provable and substantiated with receipts but I can tell you one thing the reputational blow that they'll take you know people forget uh, that there's a lot of major companies in this country that have had scandal this isn't a scandal but just an operational failure and they're able to come back from it we tend to have a pretty short-term memory but it is going to take a while before people feel confident to fly southwest particularly if they're going to implement new technology um yeah I think the short memory point is key and it would be with me too ultimately if you particularly if you're traveling for leisure you're gonna go with the best price yes it's on this is probably unlikely to happen again I hate to use the term because it's overused but could be described as a perfect storm yes uh, literally I guess in the case of last <laughs> yes. week's events and I don't I didn't even mean the, the pun because I know it was painful for a lot of people but <laughs> a perfect technological and weather storm unlikely to happen again do you I guys, guess you get a mulligan Do you on guys this. have a, a go-to airline? I mean, for me, I would side with Mark. It's usually just the best Cheapest, price is, is what Which I'm, usually ends up I'm being Southwest for. or JetBlue. Right. I haven't been on a Southwest flight in a while. Granted, I haven't traveled very much the last couple of years. But uh, JetBlue has usually been sort of the go-to, and that's because they have such it a significant presence in, in Boston. But Delta and American Airlines, I think, those three, you tend to have typically the best experience. Depends where you're flying. With if those. it's for business and you're flying into a hub city, obviously you're flying American. Or if you're going to New York City, you're flying the shuttle, you're flying Delta, you're flying American, you only have a couple shuttle choices there. Um, if you're going to Orlando, you're, you're using JetBlue or Southwest. Or, so I suppose it depends on where and um, the purpose of the trip. One of these days, I hope we can have someone on that can further explain, we've talked about the point-to-point system that Southwest operates versus the other airlines that have the hub and spoke model. Every article I read about this, and I think I've read 200 uh, over the last week or two, has mentioned that uh, that's the reason for the difference here. But I would like a- an expert to really fill us in more on, on why that is the case. But that's for another day. Nearly 2,000 Massachusetts employers benefited from the Baker administration's Hire Now program. Uh, the money that was uh, allocated to this program, it was more than $100 million uh for request in about 50 million in grants went out very quickly. And this was $4,000 that was allocated to new hires of largely small businesses for job training and enrichment and seems to be a very popular program. Why are we doing this one unemployment? Forgive me. I know I should be more upbeat being (laughs) New Year's Eve Eve, but why are we doing this one unemployment's at 4%? Uh, that's what, a, what is what is the I'm sorry. Well, that's a great question. Out at you. I know you didn't sponsor <laughs> this, but what what exactly is the rationale? These people are uh, who they're they're otherwise due to skill reasons. Uh, they would be the last to be uh, hired. I just mean that in a very sort of technical sense. So there would be an argument in a high unemployment economy for something like this. But why are we spending? 50, well, 100. it was more of a recruitment strategy, it seemed like, because the labor market was so tight that people were looking for, well, I guess why give them money for it, but people But if were, employers need, sorry, go ahead, you finish your point. I'm no, sorry. just, um, they're just trying to get people on board. I'm this out on you. <laughs> You're a nice enough guy. They're, they're just trying to get people on board, so they're giving the businesses resources to recruit talent. 
because so many businesses you need workers. Don't they have an incentive to you, more workers equals more customers? Should they not be willing to make the investment? I'm sorry, I see something like this, and I think I just think boondoggle. And it'll never, we'll never be able to tease out the effects of a program like this because it's very hard to control for other factors like the state of the economy and labor market, et cetera. But wh wh where's the uh, so-called market failure here that requires the taxpayer money be spent on something I like mean, this? coming off the heels of the PPP and some of the other initiatives that we saw during the COVID oh. pandemic, you wouldn't think that this type of program was necessarily needed, but uh, it certainly was quite no, popular. No, you're right. You know, that, forgive me, but you know these companies took PPP money. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, they definitely did. There's no doubt about it. Well, regardless, it seems like 11,000 people were hired, so I guess there's a positive But there. they would not have been otherwise? This is where it gets tricky to tease out the effects of the program. Would they not have been hired otherwise? And how do you demonstrate that? It's, it's, it's hard statistically to show that is what I'm saying, but uh, maybe because the program's relatively small, uh, we know what the opportunity cost was for those individuals. I don't know. Mark, not thrilled with the plan as much as, as others out there. We're going to take a quick break here on the Financial Exchange. But when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about small businesses as well as the shoplifting tax that many of you consumers are likely paying. That's right after this break. Stay in touch with the show by joining our exclusive tax club. Text us at 617-362-1385 and use keyword Barry. Let us know what you think about the stories we're covering. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Beneficiary designations are critically important if you want your assets to be distributed efficiently and protected from probate or the nursing home. A spouse is commonly named a beneficiary, but in that case, assets are subjected to tax consequences and they are at risk to the nursing home. One option you may not have thought of is naming your estate the beneficiary of an IRA or life insurance policy. If you're married, there are significant benefits that include avoiding the probate process and enjoying enhanced estate tax reduction without creating any income tax issues on your required minimum distributions. Call Cushing and Dolan right now at 866-848-5699 and ask for their new free guide called The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That number again is 866-848-5699. Or you can request the guide online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Beneficiary designations are critically important if you want your assets to be distributed efficiently and protected from probate or the nursing home. A spouse is commonly named a beneficiary. But in that case, assets are subjected to tax consequences and they are at risk to the nursing home. One option you may not have thought of is naming your estate the beneficiary of an IRA or life insurance policy. If you're married, there are significant benefits that include avoiding the probate process and enjoying enhanced estate tax reduction without creating any income tax issues on your required minimum distributions. Call Cushing and Dolan right now at 866-848-5699 and ask for their new free guide called The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That number again is 866-848-5699 or you can request the guide online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The United States Virgin Islands are St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. And they are the perfect place for your next vacation. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands. Because with perfect weather and year-round temperatures of 75 degrees, relaxation is at its finest. Enjoy their spectacular beaches, world-famous cuisine, and any one of their incredible experiences, like the Crucian Christmas Festival on St. Croix from December 11th through January 7th. Visit usvi.com and explore their wide variety of travel packages today. There's no money to exchange, no passport required, and best of all, no more domestic travel restrictions to enter. Paradise awaits you. Go to visitusvi.com for more information and to book your trip today. Come to America's Caribbean paradise. Visit usvi.com. That's visitusvi.com. Veterans benefits just got a whole lot better. Whether you're about to leave the service or you've been out for decades, the PACT Act gives eligibility for VA benefits to thousands of veterans. The PACT Act is a new law that expands benefits for veterans exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, and other toxic substances. 
To learn more, visit va.gov slash pact or call 1-800-MY-VA-411. If you or a loved one serve this country, it's time to get the benefits you deserve. If you're married and at least 72 years old, naming your estate a beneficiary of an IRA creates no adverse income tax consequences and protects your assets from the nursing home. Call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get their new guide, The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That's 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The latest news on inflation and how the markets are reacting every morning, right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Small businesses are finding some relief from their hiring woes. We've talked a lot this year about how tight of a labor market that is, but now we're getting some data out there that more owners are filling open jobs uh, because of some pay increases for new hires and experienced workers. And overall, small business owners seem to be a little bit more optimistic, Mark, on the overall market and the state of things than they were you know, perhaps six months ago. Um, I have not seen. Is this locally or nationally? Nationally, which, which story, from yeah. the Wall, Wall Street Journal here. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Sorry, I missed that one. <laughs> um, it would surprise me if their outlook had improved, maybe marginally, given sentiment, consumer sentiment, which small business sentiment tends to track pretty well, has been in the in the doldrums for a while. Is it a market improve? Forgive my ignorance. Yeah, forgive my making entrepreneurs, the story, entrepreneurs basically are stating that uh, raising pay, I mean, that's an obvious reason to get more people in the door. Apprenticeship program, programs and rewriting job ads, ads has seen an <sighs> increase in applicants. So You mean they're for, doing it without a handout from... Massachusetts state government? <laughs> yeah. How are they how are they training people without Massachusetts state government giving them money it's and all, guidance? It's all about huh. the marketing. The uh, private sector can do that. They all also a lot of Give companies a, had uh, right, Charlie Baker <laughs> had reported Sorry, but that, this one's stuck in my craw. That they would uh, they would just people would apply for jobs but not show up. They'd expect accept a job and then not yeah. show up or, or show up one week and then take take off the next week after that. But now we're seeing that the entrepreneurs are saying nearly 25% more of entrepreneurs in a December survey said that it was easier to fill job openings now than at the start of 2022. Okay. That was an 18% increase from the month of November. So perhaps maybe, and this is totally me speculating, we've heard from a lot of the larger companies that they were pausing on hiring and that there were some layoffs. So maybe the small business market is making up some of those jobs. I don't think that's entirely the case, but it's certainly a theory for Could it. Could be uh, evidence very anecdotal and preliminary. How big is the survey? It was 650 entrepreneurs in a ser- entrepreneurs, December Entrepreneurs, i.e. people who run a small business. Correct. Okay. Correct. So, yeah, that, I mean, that's a good enough size sample that there might be something there. To me, it suggests that maybe the labor market softening that we've seen show up very marginally in other data is borne out by that, too, which would be good news for the Fed's fight against inflation if you believe, and not everybody does, that unemployment has to go up for inflation to come down. That takes us down another route that we may not want to go down right now. But if you're in that camp, then you might be heartened by this. Sure. Financial planning is a year-round job, and with 2022 coming to an end, it's the perfect time to take a hard look at your strategy and what changes you may want to make going forward. Hi, this is Paul Lane from the Armstrong Advisor Group. We've written a brand new guide this month that will help you understand some key numbers that may affect your planning next year, like marginal tax brackets and retirement account income limits. If you are retired or getting ready to retire, there's also information about how the government taxes your Social Security benefits. This new guide called Key Numbers to Know for 2023, and you can get the copy right now from our website or by calling 800-393-4001. Again, that number is 800-393-4001 for a lot of helpful numbers for 2023 from a planning perspective. Or you can go to our website and request the guide right now at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services.
One of the things that we've seen a lot of, and uh, I don't know if it's just I bump into these videos online, but it seems like shoplifting has gone up substantially over the course of the last couple of years. And a company like Target is echoing the sentiments that I have there, claiming that on a recent earnings call last month that the damage to the company's gross, gross margins from shoplifting for the year was estimated at a whopping $600 million. And it does seem like this is becoming more and more prevalent, Mark, for a lot of these major stores here, a huge uptick in shoplifting. Yeah, my first instinct, instinct would be to connect it with deteriorating economic conditions, yes. but we haven't really seen that. Inflation remains high, and that could be a culprit. Um, maybe the culture's changed a little bit with respect to shoplifting. I've seen pieces by sort of social commentators who have suggested that... Um, it has become more acceptable socially to express dissatisfaction with the status quo. And I'm just I'm trying to be very guarded here because I don't want to pin this on any one group or movement. But it's OK to, to break stuff and rob people if you're doing it out of some sense of indignation, social indignation. Wow. I wonder if people's attitude toward uh, pilfering, you know, like stealing small amounts, little like misdemeanor type stuff. I don't know what the cutoff is, but if that hasn't changed over the past 10 years. Do you sense that, that people's attitude toward casual shoplifting, pilfering I, has changed? Uh, I haven't really uh, seen an attitude shift. I mean, th that goes into kind of whole morals and, and right and wrong. So I, I would well, hope— this is this is wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is just— Well, I— It's sort of like lying. Yeah, I would just hope I mean, that— I things that are just wrong. I would just hope that that isn't where we stand today, that, that people are more tolerant of it. What I was going to go with is the major change that I, I believe— that I've seen is just less enforcement. And so you've got thieves that can be a lot more brazen about shoplifting because they don't fear the consequences. You know, there was often security guards working malls and not to say that they're not still there, but it just seems like there's less enforcement because there's been a pivot and not necessarily, perhaps there's, we're understaffed from a law enforcement perspective. Again, this is just me pontificating. I don't know the exact numbers, but there's more of a focus on violent crime, less on shoplifting, which again, we all agree that's where the focus should be. However, you need to have a deterrent for shoplifters for a reason not to shoplift that, hey, we might get caught, we might get arrested. But it seems like the videos that I watch is just you can walk in and out. I mean, there's this example here of Rite Aid, for example. There's a, a store in New York that suffered $200,000 worth of merchandise stolen between the months of December and January. You just wonder at some point in time, that as Rite Aid... It's a, that's a lot of Robitussin. Yeah, lot of <laughs> yeah Rite Aid. That's I don't right. even know how you get up to that, that amount. That's what, what I mean. What is the most valuable thing to steal in a Rite Aid? I, I really... I don't know what item is getting... You too. They put the valuable stuff behind glass. They've learned to do that. Right. They've done that. I just don't even know how you're getting know, fish th oil that high. But what, when do you pivot and just hire some sort of security guards? You don't want to put it on the employees to have to act as the heroes to, to tackle these brazen thieves. But to me, it's the enforcement. Well, you just put, I mean, more more video surveillance and more elect and more electronic tagging of and items. Video would be a lot cheaper than hiring a is is everywhere. But that doesn't seem to ever pin down these these crooks if they come in with a mask. I mean, you're not going to spend hours of police time looking through street cams to see who took you know stuff from Rite Aid. But even if you catch them, to your earlier point, the penalty have been watered down there they're actually if, they, if I understand there actually is a, pu a push by uh, some people out there to increase um, the levels or the thresholds as to what is treated as a felony from shoplifting standpoint the dollar values but uh, you got to be able to catch them first to which prosecute requires a lot them. of resources it's just not worth it for these companies to yeah it, it's the shrinkage effect that you talk about that they're just more comfortable with stuff being stolen but it seems like at some point there's going to have to be a change. The security cameras can only do so much here. Taking a look at markets, we got the S&P 500 off about a percent as we head into the last day of trading. Only a couple, four or five hours left in the trading year. We've got the Dow Jones off 287 points at the moment. The NASDAQ is off over a full percent as well. And we've got the Russell 2000 off about a half percent here. Taking a look at oil, that is trading around $79 a barrel U.S. crude and the U.S. 10-year Treasury still hanging at about 3.9%. We're going to take a break here, but on the when we come back on the financial exchange, we've got a lot more to talk about, including much watch TVs and movies for 2023. Beginning at 10 on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. 
Financial planning is a year-round job, and with 2022 coming to an end, it's the perfect time to take a hard look at your strategy and what changes you may want to make going forward. Hi, this is Chuck Zada from the Armstrong Advisory Group. We've written a brand new guide this month that'll help you understand some key numbers that may affect your planning next year, such as marginal tax brackets and retirement account income limits. If you're retired or getting ready to retire, there's also information about how the government taxes your Social Security benefits. This new guide is called The Key Numbers to Know for 2023, and you can request your copy right now by calling 800-393-4001. That's 800-393-4001. 4001 or you can request it online at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Veterans benefits just got a whole lot better. Whether you're about to leave the service or you've been out for decades, the PACT Act gives eligibility for VA benefits to thousands of veterans. The PACT Act is a new law that expands benefits for veterans exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, and other toxic substances. To learn more, visit va.gov slash PACT or call 1-800-MY-VA-411. If you or a loved one served this country, it's time to get the benefits you deserve. Legacy planning has to be done properly if you want to keep your assets in your family. Leaving assets to your children could be problematic, especially if there are financial difficulties involved. Call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get their new guide called To Gift or Not to Gift. Tax implications to consider. That's 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The United States Virgin Islands are St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. And they are the perfect place for your next vacation. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands. Because with perfect weather and year-round temperatures of 75 degrees, relaxation is at its finest. Enjoy their spectacular beaches, world-famous cuisine, and any one of their incredible experiences, like the Crucian Christmas Festival on St. Croix from December 11th through January 7th. Visit usvi.com and explore their wide variety of travel packages today. There's no money to exchange, no passport required, and best of all, no more domestic travel restrictions to enter. Paradise awaits you. Go to visitusvi.com for more information and to book your trip today. Come to America's Caribbean paradise. Visit usvi.com. That's visitusvi.com. Hi, it's Chuck and Mike from the Armstrong Advisory Group, and we're here today with a new guide this month titled The Key Numbers to Know in 2023. Mike, let's talk a little bit about retirement accounts and how much people can contribute to them. Let's start first with 401ks. What's happening to those contribution limits for next year? Yeah, this is the item that impacts most savers out there that you know that work for a large employer. You might have that 401k plan. And with inflation, a lot of these different tax items have been increasing. So for 2023, the limit, the annual limit on how much you can put into a 401k, 403b, most 457 plans, it's gone up to $22,500. That's up from just $20,500 in 2022. So a good $2,000 increase when it comes to those contribution limits. What if you're over age 50? What can you do as a catch-up contribution? Yeah, so they increased that too, not quite as much, but the IRS increased the catch-up contribution for 2023 up to $7,500, so a $1,000 increase from where we were in 2022, so really bumping that up again. Let's say that you don't have access to a 401k. What about an IRA or Roth IRA? Yeah, unfortunately, not quite as rich here, but you're going to see that contribution limit go up to $6,500 on those IRAs from $6,000 in years past. You also have a catch-up available to you there. But just keep in mind that there are some income phase-outs, especially for those Roth IRAs. A whole bunch of numbers change each year as it relates to your personal finances. And our guide this month is titled The Key Numbers to Know in 2023. How do you request it? Call 800 393 Four zero zero one. That number again is 800-393-4001, or you can also request it online at armstrongadvisory.com.
The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Stream the show every day on the iHeartRadio app or watch the guys live at FinancialExchangeShow.com. We're breaking down the biggest business stories of the day only on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Boston.com came out with a list of five must-watch movies and TV shows streaming Right now, the best of what's new on Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max, Disney Plus, and more. Some of the ones that were listed here, and I don't know if you guys have seen any of them. In particular, from the movie perspective, he they highlight Ambulance, which is done by director Michael Bay, who was behind Armageddon and Transformers, uh, typically known for these... Uh, gargantuan and bombastic that's from boston.com's uh brainless action movies that's been his sort of niche but now uh coming out with ambulance which uh has i believe who do we have uh, jake gyllenhaal in this one and this is not a movie that i've seen i have fallen behind on the movie piece the one thing that i find so difficult is the content is just all over the place it's really hard to figure out what's good and where and it seems like Probably five, ten years ago, we were all watching the same thing just because there were less choices. Now there are more choices, which is great, but I seem to have the toughest time finding something for my wife and I to watch from a movie perspective, or I guess there's a lot more great TV shows out there. Yeah, I guess. I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't, they're not marketing to me at this point. I've just sort of sworn it off. So I'm, you swore I'm, I'm on TV. Be, I'm not you swore, be, no you streaming TV. TV. I like a few. Andor was great, for example. Most recently, that left an impression. Uh, the Disney uh, Star Wars spinoff, of which there are many, but this one was actually good. Andor, if you have Disney, it's worth it. But you've, if you have Disney, you've already figured that out. So Ben, how I'm about not, how about you? Any any shows that uh, you queue up, or are you like myself, where it's mostly sports on a on a nightly basis? It's mostly sports, and then it's like Bluey and Paw oh, Patrol right. and all right. that crap. Yeah. Uh, I just got a flash review of the movie Ambulance. Okay, Ambulance quote was not good. Great preview, <laughs> bad movie. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. <laughs> um, that yeah. yeah, it, it really. We haven't had. I actually, I'll bring up that I've got the top ten highest grossing movies for 2022, and you look at this list. There's just so few of these that I've actually seen, and I don't think that was the case in prior years. I I usually would have seen the top one. Uh, take a guess, guys, at what was the number one. This should be relatively obvious. We covered this pretty heavily on the show. Top grossing movie for 2022. I'd imagine it's Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. yeah. Top Gun Maverick came in at number one. It had grossed as of December 28th, one point, close to about $1.5 billion worldwide. That's actually one that I would like to watch and have not yet uh, yet watched Top Gun Maverick. Number two. I, I will say before you go to number two, yes. I'm sorry, but Top Gun Maverick was actually really good. It was fantastic. As a standalone movie, it's good. Yep. As a sequel, it's great. It's so hard to do a sequel well, but you'd say that they did a good job with it, Ben. They didn't screw up the uh, the format that they had in place. Oftentimes, they just the plot is weak, but in this case, I mean, by all the reviews, uh, it did quite well. Yeah, there's a couple of scenes where you'll roll your eyes and go, Ugh, really? Yeah. Hollywood, yuck. Right. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, it was actually a pretty good movie. But it, like I said, as a sequel, it's one of the all-timers. You know, there's Godfather 2 as the ultimate oh, sure. sequel, and then like... Empire Strikes Back is probably like the next great sequel. Right. Uh, and then this would probably fall right in there. Wow, that's high praise. The number two movie, uh, this one would probably be pretty a easy to guess as well. A any thoughts on uh, the number two highest grossing movie for I was trying to remember a movie that came out this year. <laughs> this one's been publicized a lot recently. Uh, director James Cameron. Oh, that clued yeah, in for okay. you. Avatar, The Way of Water, <laughs> that grossed. Uh, Mark, we're just swinging and miss. He's like me on grocery store prices. Yeah. Just no idea what is going on from a movie perspective. Grossing over $1.03 billion on the year. And then the third, and again, these are all, and we've talked about this trend in movies, it's constantly existing IP that they're just reworking, whether it be with sequels 
are superhero movies. That's really the only game in town. And I think that's why it's so difficult to find a new movie that my wife and I may be interested in because there's no more of that, you know, smaller budget, whether my wife loves rom-com. So we basically watch anyone that comes out. There's less of that in production. Really, these studios are going after big budget with known IP that they can get some serious return on and avoiding those smaller tier movies out there. Well, it's also causing kind of the quote unquote death of the movie star. Right. They're all superheroes now. And what did you say was the number one movie? Top Gun Maverick? Yes. That might be the o- starring the only movie star actually left in the world in Tom Cruise. Because I don't even think Denzel moves the needle the way he used to. He's put out a lot of just kind of ho-hum action movies that just kind of do nothing, float out there. Equalizer 2, you know, stuff like that. Tom Cruise might be the last movie star in America. It's probably Cruise and DiCaprio, I would imagine, that those are the two that if you have them behind a movie, you know X amount of a substantial amount of people are gonna go check out their movie. You could have argued before, eh, not even Will Smith is bankable. And I'm talking pre the Oscar fiasco. He he's not as bankable. I'm trying to think of who would be perhaps the third one that uh, would really draw people in. Those are the two that you'd look to as as really your go-to movie stars. Rounding out some of the list here, we jump into the super uh, superhero world. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, that was number four. Jurassic World Dominion was number three at over a billion. One of them that was on here that I didn't even realize that they had a Batman movie this year, they did. It was released in March called The Batman. That did $770 million worldwide in terms of gross. And then Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Again, another sequel here did $803 million. Of the top 10 list, I have seen none of these movies. I don't even need to ask Mark because I know that there's no <laughs> chance he has seen, I've seen a couple. any of them. I've seen a couple. Okay, have you seen Fantastic Beasts, Beast, The Secrets of Dumbledore? I may have tried. I think I tried to sit through five to seven minutes of that and something interesting happened, like a bird flew by the window. <laughs> Thor. Or my dog needed to go out. Thor, and, Love and Thunder. Again, uh, I did see Love and Thunder. And I didn't l- dislike it as much as, uh, if this is not an oxymoron, serious comic book people who- Oh, it got panned. It did get pan. Yeah. I didn't. I don't have very. Why would you? My expectations were so low that I take these as discrete, as, as discrete morsels of entertainment. I'm not looking for a common thread or a good story arc or anything like that. Uh, I thought as entertainment, as as mindless entertainment, it was fine. I know it was. It wasn't great. It, it was apparently. I saw the movie too. It was too silly for the the comic book nerds, quote unquote, the people that are super into it was, the Marvel movies. And I get too that. silly. I'm like, listen, it's a two hour magic eye. That's what it is. It's two hours. What the heck's a magic? Uh, you don't remember the magic eye books? No. You don't remember magic eye books no. either? Yeah, you'd open the book, and then if you like crossed your eyes or like stared at the image long enough, like a rabbit would appear or a sailboat. Is this, okay. is this healthy? <laughs> Probably you, you not. cross your eyes and stare at the well, image? Whatever you do. This you, was before st- parental That's why most people on. my age wear glasses or contacts. <laughs> to, to back up my point, though, there <laughs> is about 40% less film content in theaters this year compared to that of 2019. So that's really what we're seeing. 40%? 40% percent less content compared to pre-COVID, where streaming services now have become really the prevalent way to consume. And you've seen a mixed approach of some of the theatrical releases like Top Gun, which was proving the resiliency, I think, of the movie theater experience to see a movie like that. But there are many others that uh, just go directly to these streaming services where they're just trying to build up their content arms to have more people linked to the platform or you know sticky to the platform but it's just getting harder and harder to keep track of what subscription services that you want to have in place we have netflix and hbo max i know disney plus is coming down the road with two kids we're going to be locked into that too but at some point how many are we going to have to toggle between them oh amazon prime too i guess for the football on thursdays it's uh it's just getting a lot how about you guys two to three it seems like everyone has two to three subscription services I want to say I have four or five. Yeah. It's yeah. So I have D- Disney, right. Prime. I don't have HBO Max anymore, but... Uh, I'm thinking of getting rid of it. Hulu. I've right. got a couple of them. Every time a deal pops up and it's like, hey, three bucks a month for this one, it's like, yep, new email address. I'll go get this one too. And that's what's misleading about the subscriber growth for a lot of these. They're, they're just giving them away to try to boost the numbers. But as we pointed to earlier in the show, that there's going to be... A, there is a reckoning to that now, that they're spending a lot of money these uh, these streaming... Pre- 
streaming companies and growth, subscriber growth is not enough. Yeah, I think if I had to sum it all up, and this ties into the investment themes we were discussing earlier, party's over, everybody. Yep. Money's not free anymore. Yep. People are paying attention, as Paul said multiple times today and yesterday, to actual profits and the ability to earn money and distribute it to shareholders. Show me- Gravy train is- Go ahead. The money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I stepped on. We're going to take a break here on the Financial Exchange, but when we come back, a little bit of stack roulette right after this. If you missed any of today's show, catch up whenever you want on the iHeartRadio app. Just search for the Financial Exchange for full shows and individual interviews. This is your home for breaking business and financial news. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. The United States Virgin Islands are St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John, and they are the perfect place for your next vacation. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands. Because with perfect weather and year-round temperatures of 75 degrees, relaxation is at its finest. Enjoy their spectacular beaches, world-famous cuisine, and any one of their incredible experiences, like the Crucian Christmas Festival on St. Croix from December 11th through January 7th. Visit usvi.com and explore their wide variety of travel packages today. There's no money to exchange, no passport required, and best of all, no more domestic travel restrictions to enter. Paradise awaits you. Go to visit usvi.com for more information and to book your trip today. Come to America's Caribbean paradise. Visit usvi.com. That's visit usvi.com. Beneficiary designations are critically important if you want your assets to be distributed efficiently and protected from probate or the nursing home. A spouse is commonly named a beneficiary, but in that case, assets are subjected to tax consequences and they are at risk to the nursing home. One option you may not have thought of is naming your estate the beneficiary of an IRA or life insurance policy. If you're married, there are significant benefits that include avoiding the probate process and enjoying enhanced estate tax reduction without creating any income tax issues on your acquired minimum distributions. Call Cushing & Dolan right now at 866-848-5699 and ask for their new free guide called The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That number again is 866-848-5699 or you can request the guide online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing & Dolan. Cushing & Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing & Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Hi, this is Mike Armstrong from the Armstrong Advisory Group. As another new year approaches, we've put together a brand new free guide that will walk you through the key numbers you'll need to know for 2023, especially when it comes to taxes. This guide outlines the marginal tax brackets for both married couples and single individuals, and it includes details about the new standard deduction, information that will be pivotal for your financial planning strategy. We also explore other areas like Medicare Part B premiums and all the ways your Social Security benefits are taxed. Call us today at 800 800- 393-4001 and request your free guide. The year may be ending, but it's not the time to put your financial needs on hold. Call us at 800-393-4001 to get your guide or request it online from our website, armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Veterans benefits just got a whole lot better. Whether you're about to leave the service or you've been out for decades, the PACT Act gives eligibility for VA benefits to thousands of veterans. The PACT Act is a new law that expands benefits for veterans exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, and other toxic substances. To learn more, visit va.gov slash PACT or call 1-800-MY-VA-411. If you or a loved one served this country, it's time to get the benefits you deserve. If you're married and at least 72 years old, naming your estate a beneficiary of an IRA creates no adverse income tax consequences and protects your assets from the nursing home. Call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get their new guide, The Pros and Cons of Naming Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. That's 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Breaking business and financial news first throughout the day, only here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network.
The Financial Exchange is proudly partnered with VA New England. If you or a loved one serve this country, get the health benefits you earned and deserve. Call 844-VA-CARES. That's 844-VA-CARES. All right, it's time for a little bit of stack roulette. Mark, why don't you kick us off? No, technically not from the stack, but I, I wanted to end the year on somewhat of an optimistic note in, in, a, in a relative sense. And, of course, I'll, I'll weave inflation into this. So we're going to finish the year with about 6% inflation, mm -hmm. you know, December to December, using the Fed's preferred measure. That's a lot, more than it's been in decades. Everybody knows this. But there are plenty of regions and countries with much higher inflation. Not a coincidence. So this is a global we're very U.S. centric on this show. We have to be. It's where what our investors are concerned with. It's where their money is. But inflation is a global phenomenon, not just today, but it was in the 70s. And that's due in part to common shocks and part to the way countries transmit inflation through trade and financial links. There are about a dozen countries, some of which are worth mentioning, with much higher inflation than ours. For example, the Netherlands, 10 percent year over year. Germany running at a 10 percent clip. Some of this I just didn't realize, so I'll share it. Uh, the euro area, which includes Germany, Germany a little over 10 percent. The U.K., not part of the euro area, nearly 11 percent. And then you've got some developing countries, Russia, 12 percent. Turkey, believe it or not, 85 percent inflation year 85. over year. And Argentina, a, a chronic uh, a, 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 a perpetrator of chronic fiscal and monetary mismanagement, nearly 100 percent year over year. So uh, inflation and the movements we've seen in interest rates and in many asset classes like stocks, et cetera, that we talk about on this show, these trends have been global. Yeah, no question about it. Inflation is everywhere. For for my story, when I look back at 2022, probably the one that stands out the most to me will be the FTX collapse and just all that we've seen the fallout from that. Uh, as someone who's been a crypto skeptic, to me, I took a little bit of joy in seeing it all sort of fall down. And in particular, the thing that stood out to me is you had all these really popular celebrity figures. And I remember seeing the first ads, whether it's a Tom Brady or Larry David getting behind financial products. And to me, just knowing what I know about the financial industry, there's a lot of regulation and legalese behind what you can endorse, what you can say, whether you have uh, people who are you know, touting your services. And when I saw the first ads, I said, gee, first of all, the Brinks truck must be backing up to their house and paying them millions of dollars to do this. That's the only reason that they've got these people like a Tom Brady. But the inherent risk that comes with promoting for these types of exchanges for what people to do with your money because you you get a Tom Brady because a lot of people look up to him oh if Tom Brady is involved with this then perhaps I'll put my money there and the slew of lawsuits coming after all these people to me it's uh it's just been fascinating to watch not to mention just the story of uh Sam Brinkman Fried himself it, it will make for a fantastic movie someday I'm sure it's probably already in the works. That to me has stood out The whole a lot. episode is underscored to me, and I remember thinking this during the accounting scandals of the 2000s, uh, these acts were perpetrated Enron. in the 90s, yep. uh, Tyco and Enron and others, mm -hmm. that it does take two to tango. You need investors to want to believe unbelievable performance. Right. In the case of Madoff, investors yes. had to believe that you could generate 10% a year with nearly zero volatility, which is implausible, physically, if you like, impossible. In this case, investors had to believe that crypto, despite its having been around for nearly 15 years and having no real useful yet applications, had to want to believe that the upside for Bitcoin was tenfold, 20-fold. So for a, a, a fraudster to be successful... You need to find, this sounds like trite and obvious, but it always strikes me how you need a gullible, willfully gullible other side to take you, that. You need the window of opportunity, but even to your point, you know, I'm focusing on the, the retail investor out there, but there was a lot of major, well-recognized uh, venture capital firms that were behind him too, that he mm, hoodwinked true. or bamboozled. Sequoia Capital is one of the most pronounced, uh, or most well-known, rather, uh, venture capital funds out there. They had invested funds. Uh, there was a lot of what you'd think, quote-unquote, smart money behind it, but it's just further proof that these scams, they'll take on different forms yeah. over time, but they'll always continue to uh, to emerge when there's opportunity. Speaking of another scam that I enjoyed, this story 
really dates back uh, maybe more towards last year, but it became in the news again recently. It's specific to Massachusetts and lottery tickets where you had a father-son duo cash over 14,000 lottery tickets claiming up to more than 20 million in Massachusetts mod- lottery winnings over a nine-year period. And what these two were doing basically is that they were cashing in lottery tickets for people who had won and taking a VIG for doing it and not reporting any Uh, so that the winner would not have to report any taxes on the gain. They recently were just found guilty of defrauding the Massachusetts Lottery and Internal Revenue Service. They're scheduled to be sentenced in April. Just amazing that they could carry this thing on for nine years. The same two people are coming in and cashing 14,000 lottery tickets. So it's illegal to purchase a winning lottery ticket from someone else in exchange for the promise to make a gift to them? It's illegal to um, use fake gambling losses to cash other people's lottery tickets oh, they to had offset oh. those winnings on their own tax return. So these two were saying that they had um, substantial gambling okay, losses to offset okay. against the gambling wins that they were getting from others who had won lottery tickets. There were other scenarios where the lottery ticket winners may have liens such as child support payments or or other obligations that they didn't want the state being aware that they had had this windfall. So they'd reach out to these two who would claim the prize, take a fee for their services, but not have the actual winner subject to those type of, uh, of expenses. To me, just a fascinating story that it was able to go on for so long. You'd think, and the Massachusetts State Lottery did have rules in place that only a certain amount of times can you cash in winning lotto tickets, but they finally caught up with them. It'll be interesting to see what kind of sentencing that they get later this year in April when that uh, when that comes out. Kind of clever. <laughs> Illegal, unfortunately. Very clever. But, but clever. but how do you not know? Oh, it's Mark again cashing his 14,000 lottery ticket. Well, it Gee, wasn't immediately that, obvious that to me suspicious. that you couldn't buy a lottery, a winning lottery ticket, buy it in exchange for a promise to make a gift to the original purchaser. How about but the, if they're doing it to avoid a legal obligation, that's where you nail them. Oh, yeah. I mean, how you know numbers, the astronomical odds of these two jamokes catching in 14. Yeah, but that in and of itself is not illegal. It's not, but it's mathematically mathematically just impossible for them to win. I know, I know. But presumably they they spread the tickets out among, you didn't go into the same 7-Eleven every day and here's my ticket. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, they, they spread it all across the board. Wrapping up the last day of the trading for 2022, markets are off. We're down about close to 1% on a lot of the major indices. Thank you so much for listening all this year. We really appreciate it and wishing all of you out there a wonderful 2023. Have a fantastic weekend. We will be back with you on Tuesday. Thank you so much. Financial planning is a year-round job, and with 2022 coming to an end, it's the perfect time to take a hard look at your strategy and what changes you may want to make going forward. Hi, this is Chuck Zada from the Armstrong Advisory Group. We've written a brand new guide this month that'll help you understand